one of the things we often have questions on is how do I scan and crop my images so that they are correct for importing and contributing into the MyMovies applications. Um, we require that when contributing a front and back cover, the front and back cover is of the exact same size. Um, we do that because it's then more easy to lay it out correctly and showing correctly in the applications. So um, I'm going to show you with this video how I'm going to handle uh, editing uh, two different types of covers. Um, I'm going to be using the GIMP application uh, on a Mac. It's going to be the same thing on Windows. The GIMP application is a free one, so that's the reason I'm going to use this and not use Photoshop or any other uh, image editing application. Normally I myself is a Photoshop guy, so you will have to excuse me if I have a little bit of problems finding the right menus in, uh, in the GIMP applications. So, first of all, um, I already scanned my images at 300 dpi, which is the maximum resolution that uh, the application is going to uh, store. And I'm going to pull in the first cover here, which is the easiest one. This is a cover that can be scanned as one item. So I removed the paper from uh, from the cover and uh, and I scanned just the paper. Um, I didn't place it evenly on the scanner because I wanted to show you how you can use rotation. So this is this is already cropped relatively well in relation to just having the most part of the cover. I'm going to select the crop tool and just crop out a little bit more of it so that I only have the part I need to work with. Then I'm going to go into transform and select this arbitrary rotation. I know that I'm going to start with around 90 degrees just to get it right there. And I'll try to make it as even as I can with the up and downs here. And I think it's, it's not going to be right in the first attempt. So let's see if I select rotate here. Then I'm going to go into the view menu, menu and into um, fit image to window. So I just have as big of an image to work with as possible. And you can see I didn't quite get it right on the rotation. So I'm just going to go in and rotate it a little bit more. You shouldn't be doing this too many times, but a few times is okay. Each time you're going to rotate it like this, there's going to be a little bit of the image quality lost um, because of the rotation. I think this is just going to check a little bit around how much space I have here and here. I think this is, this is what we want to go with. Perhaps a little bit less like that. So rotate it there. And then I'm going to try the crop tool again. Take one corner here. And as you can see, it's not quite perfect. There's a little bit more here than in the other corner. So I'm just going to start with the corner down here instead. And it means that I'm going to be cropping a little bit off the cover. That's just a little bit. So it's not going to to matter that much, but uh, if I had the time, I would likely have uh, adjusted it a little bit more to be better. So I'm going to go to the image menu again and crop to selection. So this is this is what most of you uh, would end up with if you have already scanned, rotated, and cropped an image. Such image here can be imported into the application by using the import full cover scan, and the application is going to. Uh, imported based on the sizes and the standard size of a case. But it, it can't always do that because it differs how much, uh, how big the spine is depending on the cover type. So um, you can use this uh, guide to see how you can handle it manually if the import full cover scan option is not giving you a good result. So now I have this one uh, scan of both the front and back cover. I could go into the layers uh, tool here and click and select new with layer from visible. So now I have two layers on top of each other, both containing front and back cover. And I'm going to take my move tool and in the GIMP on the Mac, I hold down the command key because then I know that when I drag here, I can only drag in either direction. So I'm not going to be dragging it other than horizontally. 
So I'm going to drag this into a, into where I think the front cover is correctly placed on the left side, like this. <clears throat> and then I'm going to take my crop tool and I'm going to crop out this area and select, sorry, image and crop to selection. Now I'm going to just change so that I can only see the back cover. And if I cropped out so that I still had some part of the spine, I would make my cropping smaller here based on the back cover. But this is already perfect, so I'm not going to crop further. And now I have one image containing the front and the back cover um, of this image. So I'm just going to choose File and export as and I'm going to save it as um, Toy Story Front and export and the quality is by default set to 90 that's okay it's about the same quality that the application is going to downscale to if uh, if, if you uh, do not install anything but don't go lower than the 90 then I'm going to hide the layer containing the front cover and I'm going to export the back cover. So I'm going to export that as Toy Story back. There and export. So now I have two exactly uh, the same size images for the front and back cover and you can contribute those directly into, uh, into the, uh, to the service. So I'm going to show you another example here. I have a cover here that is a box where I can't scan them as one item, so it's scanned as two different covers. I'm going to dra drag both of these into uh, to the image application here. And I'm going to start with the front cover. I have again here placed them on purpose so that they are really bad rotated because I think it almost no matter what you do, you always have to rotate thing, the, the covers a little bit to uh, to get them rotated correct. And I can just as well show you uh, easily when it's it's rota rotated really bad. So I'm just going to again make a smaller selection so I have a smaller working area. Image crop to selection, and again zoom and fit image to window. So. Now I have a little bit easier uh, image to work with when rotating. So I'm going to enter the image, transform and the arbitrary rotation again. And I'm just going to nudge this a little bit until I believe I have something that is relatively correct. Rotate. I'm just going to check with my cropping tool. I'm not going to crop it yet. I'm just going to check with the cropping tool if this is actually cropped correct. Let me just see why it's not doing this all right. There it is. And I think that's still within what is acceptable. I again here would likely adjust it a little bit more um, if this was not a, a tutorial video going to jump to the back cover and we're going to do the exact same thing here and it's you'll see afterwards why I'm not cropping it uh, into the final area just preparing it so here I'm going to say crop to selection I'm going to do a little bit faster now because we've already done it for the front zoom fit image and window image transform arbitrary rotation and just it until it's likely around correct that would be there crop tool trying again to see if this is okay and that's this is quite close so it's okay so now I'm going to go to my front cover and I'm going to select all and then I'm going to copy going back to the back cover now I need a new layer. So in the layers area here, I'm going to double click, select new layer, just accept this. 
and I have my new layer where I can paste my front cover. So the problem now is that I have one image, one layer containing the back cover and one layer containing the front cover. I'm just going to click here so you can see that there's just these two layers. If I change the opacity now of the front cover here, let's say I'm just going to choose 70, you can see one cover over the other and I can move them in so that they are placed in the same position, around the same position. I'm just going to be using the keyboard um, here for this because it's easier to get it right. So I'm going to try to place them in so that they are placed, in, placed on top of each other. I think that's about there. Then I'm going to set my opacity back to 100 there and I'm going to try to create a selection here sorry that was the wrong one wrong tool that's the right one and again now I'm getting a little bit extra here on top so I'm just going to do, redo it from the corner down here there redo it from the corner and now I have a relatively good selection there now I'm going to change the visibility of the front cover so that I can see if my selection is still good for the back cover. And it seems that this is okay. Perhaps there's a little bit of the paper showing here, but I think that's that's what we have to accept on a copper type like this. So perhaps I could crop a little bit more here on the bottom, but it's still the cover you can see. There, so I now have one selection for both my front and back cover. So I'm going to select image and crop to selection and I have now front cover in one layer back cover in another layer so I'm going to say file export F S and then back to the future front cover and export like this hiding the front cover, doing the same thing for the back cover. And there you go. So now I have my scans ready to submit. I have the front and back cover of the Back to the Future box set here and I have the front and the back cover of my Toy Story here. So two different types of covers, one scanned in as one item and one scanned in as separate items, showing you how to get the exact same size from the scans, so they're ready to contribute. So thank you for watching this and uh, happy scanning.